In January 2006, I began a project on America's wars. I was 24 when I started, and as a member of the generation fighting them, I felt compelled to play a role in creating a record for history. I thought that going to war was going to give me answers, and that at the end of it I was going to understand some of the secrets that make up the puzzle of our existence. Now I have far more questions than answers. I saw little to make me believe in good and evil. The only truth I found is that fear corrupts everything. I spent over seven months embedded with the U.S. Army in the past two years. In that period, I went on dozens of midnight raids on Iraqi homes. The raids would usually happen well past midnight, when the target was expected to be sound asleep with their family. A stack of soldiers would crash through the door, yelling in English, and then would race through the house and restrain all the adult males before they could react. Once the house was secure, the soldiers would begin a methodical search, pulling everything out of the cabinets and onto the floor, looking for illegal weapons, propaganda, or contraband. The men and boys would be separated for questioning, while the women were isolated in a room to be searched and soothed by female soldiers. Most of the raids took place in ordinary neighborhoods. Toys would often be strewn on the lawn, and the interior of the houses would be dominated by pictures of family, the smell of leftover cooking, and a television set. It was impossible to think of these thoroughly familiar and banal places as havens for evil terrorists. Many of the soldiers agreed. Others wouldn't say anything at all. Their faces would become masks, and they would talk about the most pedestrian details while they trashed the house. The raids made me realize that in war nearly everyone is a victim, and the most vast and incomprehensible violence and suffering can derive from just a few ignorant people thousands of miles away. That's a notion that I still have trouble wrapping my head around. One and a half years after I took a picture in Iraq of a young boy who had been separated for questioning while soldiers searched his house, I was in the small town of Darien, Wisconsin, visiting my friend Raymond Hubbard, a National Guard soldier who had lost his left leg in Iraq on July 4, 2006. As he climbed a stool to change a light bulb, I had a flashback to that moment in Iraq. The room was bathed in almost identical light, but in place of the boy was my wounded friend Raymond, and instead of a soldier in the next room, there was a toy Star Wars stormtrooper. Although Raymond was an enemy to the Iraqis, he's also a very caring family man, and was victimized by circumstance and history's unpredictable path in much the same way. Raymond has had a very difficult road since his wounding. A rocket landed a dozen feet from him when he was on guard duty, immediately ripping off his left leg and sending shrapnel through his body. He lost most of his blood and was in a coma for over a month. When he woke up from his coma and discovered the details of his injury, he was deeply troubled. His father had been wounded in Vietnam in a nearly identical incident almost 40 years before, and after struggling for years, he died of complications related to alcoholism when Raymond was 15. In September of 2007, Raymond was discharged from the hospital and began walking on a prosthetic leg. He returned to Wisconsin, where he tried to resume his normal life, taking over many of the domestic responsibilities, while his wife Sarah worked as a high school calculus teacher. Still, the pain of his injuries persists, and his progress is stymied by his reliance on pain medication. Sarah, Raymond's wife, often worries about the unseen toll that the war has taken on her husband. Although Raymond is committed to bouncing back from his injuries, and returning to a normal life. He is sometimes debilitated by anger and deep depression. Despite the strong bonds of family, it is a lonely life for many severely injured soldiers. This last picture is of Raymond, taken at Walter Reed Hospital in Washington, D.C., where he spent the majority of his recovery. I often visit him there before he was discharged, and one of the most common sights was of legless vets sitting by themselves in the shadows at night, chain-smoking cigarettes. For wounded veterans like Raymond, the war will never be far away. <laughs>